about time. What's going on? Yo. Rumor Report. Rumor Report. This is the Rumor Report. Talk to him. With Angela Yee on The Breakfast Club. All right. Well, last week on First Take, Stephen A. Smith had some things to say about black people being underpaid compared to their white counterparts, as well as women being underpaid compared to men. Here's what he had to say. We are still black in this country. We don't trust this country in terms of meritocracy always. We know the bottom line is, is that just like women are underpaid compared to male counterparts, Blacks are underpaid compared to white counterparts. And so when you look at it from that perspective, and of course, I have people to look at me. I'm not talking about me, even though I got news for you. I am underpaid compared to some people on television and what they get paid. But that's a subject for another day. I ain't apologizing for that to a damn. So I am underpaid. Having said all of that, it ain't about me. All right, this sparked a whole conversation. He makes $12 million a year, which is an $8 million yearly salary and a $4 million per year production contract. Well, one person who weighed in was Jamil Hill. Now, she posted what some of uh, other people make. Sean Hannity makes $25 million a year. Anderson Cooper makes $12 million a year. Tucker Carlson makes $10 million a year. These are all faces of their networks. I wouldn't consider Troy Aikman the face of ESPN, and he's making $18 million a year. Yeah, I mean, I can see why Stephen A. feels like that. I mean, you know, like he said, he said out of everybody on TV, not just, you know, sports broadcasters. And like Jamel said, he, he Stephen A. is the face of ESPN. He is ESPN. Let's be clear. Not just ESPN. He's a big part of uh, the Disney ABC family. He does what? I think, what is that? What is that? What's that show, that, that the basketball show? Can't remember the name of it with him and Jalen Rose and Mike Wilborn and all of them that they do before the games. But, mm-hmm. yeah, I can see him making – more than $12 million a year for everything he does? Mm-hmm. Well, you know, he's unapologetic about it, and, and it is. As what, he should be. Yeah. All right, now um, let's talk about Johnny Depp. So he's going to be doing a Fenty guest, a Savage Fenty guest appearance in Rihanna's show. Uh, so they're saying he'll be a featured surprise guest in her Savage Fenty Volume 4 fashion show. It's the first time that she's actually... Uh, inviting, I, I think, a man to be a part of it. So he'll be the first male, and he'll be making history doing that. I was saying, I was watching um, Nightmare on Elm Street on the flight, the first one. I forgot Johnny Depp was in that. If you guys want to flash back and watch that. All right, now, Dwayne Wade's ex-wife has filed an objection to her daughter Zaya's uh, name change. Uh, she filed in court yesterday that he's that she feels that Dwayne Wade is trying to make money off of their transgender daughter Zaya's name and gender change and she's filed a petition with the LA County Superior Court um, to legally change 15 year old Zaya Dwayne Wade filed a petition to legally change her name at the time he said he did notify his ex-wife but in court documents Siobhan said her ex-husband did not try to contact or confer with her regarding Zaya's name change or transition and violated their custody agreement and she also argued that Dwayne Wade who reportedly makes made an estimated $200 million during his 16-year career, career, may be pressuring our child to move forward with the name and gender change in order to capitalize on the financial opportunities that he has received from companies as a result of Zaya coming out, according to uh, court documents. Now, Dwayne Wade has already responded to these allegations. Uh, I saw that he was not happy about having to do this at a time when he's on vacation and, you know, dealing with other things. But he said, so this must be the new way of parenting. I guess I have to address these allegations here, which is a damn shame. While I'm, a li- while I'm on a life-changing trip in our motherland, Africa, I've received a social media post about me forcing our 15-year-old child to be someone she's not and to do something against her will. These are serious and harmful allegations that have hurt our children. While none of us are surprised by Siobhan's attempt to fight Zaya's identity and her unwavering attempt to drag my name through the mud, I'm very disappointed that she continuously finds ways of centering herself and her needs without regard to her children. This report came in, came out while Zaya was in class. This is a kid who has maintained a 4.0 GPA in honors classes while navigating all this unsolicited and harmful attention and debates about her gender and sexuality from those who are committed to not listening to her, much less even knowing her. So he goes on to explain his side of things and says that Siobhan has not even been trying to co-parent over the years. And she's left her home to see more lawyers and has taken the time to talk to more lawyers since I filed for divorce. Then she's left her home to actually see or have truly spoken and listened to Zaya over all these years. That has to be mentally, emotionally, and spiritually draining, right? 
Which for who? Part? For Both everybody? Sides, for yeah. yeah, for the whole family. I mean, it's an interesting case, right? Because, you know, the father feels w one way, the mother feels one way. And if I read correctly, she's fighting uh, because she wants uh, the, the, the child to wait until they're 18 to really make any permanent decisions, right? And she's also saying that their daughter is being pressured to change the name and gender for capitalizing off of the press and attention that it's getting. Yeah, I don't know about all that. That ain't my business. But, but I, that's I what she's a alleging. Yeah, but I think it's fair to say, hey, man, you know, wait until the child is 18 before they make any permanent decisions. Yeah, it's nobody's. About, about their gender. Like you said, it's nobody's business. But, you know, they, they that's a conversation they both can have. My mom might see it one way. Dad might see it the other way, you mm -hmm. know? Absolutely. You know, I and he does fair, have. Th and, and, I think uh, it's fair just to say to wait till the child is 18, though. And I think what he's saying, though, is that Zai is very aware of who she is and nobody's pressuring her. This is what she wants to do. And he also says, I've given Siobhan the opportunity to reach out to Zaya's teachers, doctors, and therapists over the years and even meet her friends so she could get her own understanding of our child's needs for her life. She won't do it. She has not been to a school, recital, graduation, school dance, play date, practice, parent-teacher conference, etc. And Zaya has given her every opportunity to try to get to know her. She won't do it. So on Dwayne Wade's behalf, he's saying, you don't even know your own child. All right, and that is your rumor report. All right, Charlamagne, who are you giving that donkey to? Uh, speaking of children, uh, four after the hour, man, we need these two uh, high schoolers in Iowa to come to the front of the congregation. We would like to have a word with them because uh, when I used to get poor grades in school, I had a way of dealing with those things. Uh, they did too. And I don't think y'all will agree with how they dealt with it. We'll talk about it for after the hour. All right. And then after Donkey today, don't forget, ask Yee. You can get on them phone lines right now, 800-585-1051. It's The Breakfast Club.